the conversations uh, West African Communications Awards has come a long way. And I'm always happy to be behind the microphone uh, and seeing this as is my staple. So without much ado, um, I will invite our original editor, uh, Dejua Shoyenka, uh, to tell us a bit about the conversation and also why every year we organize this Communications Award. So if we could all applaud, we would applaud. But Wherever you just you are, applaud the welcome of Adidjuwa Shoyenka, a very hardworking uh, regional editor. I do hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm audible. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Thank you. Right, good morning, and thank you for the um, kind introductions, uh, Godfrey. Uh, warm welcome and, and good morning from Lagos to all our distinguished um, West African academics and colleagues who have um, made it to this event this morning. Um, it gives me pleasure to welcome you to the fourth edition of the West African Science Communication uh, Awards. Today, today we gathered um, in what I would describe as this global village square okay, to celebrate some of West Africa's brightest and academic minds who, in the course of the past year, have chosen to. Uh, it's a loud echo. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, but. I mean, as I was saying, uh, we, we, we're here to celebrate um, some of West Africa's brightest academic minds who, in the course of the past year, have chosen to make impact by contributing their expertise to ongoing discourse on how to solve um, problems and make life better in the region and across the world. Uh, the people we are celebrating today have contributed to the Conversation Africa's mission of creating greater and easier access to the body of knowledge and expertise that exists in our ivory towers and research centers across, um, across the region. Um, but then I kept talking about uh, the Conversation on Africa. So who are we? As some of you may already know, the Conversation on Africa is a not-for-profit media platform that uh, democratizes um, knowledge by connecting Africa's university and research sectors to the broader public. Uh, the Conversation Africa's mission is to mainstream the voices of scientists and researchers in the general news media and to support science engagement and science communication activities of scientists in Africa as a whole. Um, since we launched in May 2015, the Conversation Africa has published well over 9,000 articles from academics, researchers, and scientists whose news articles have reached more than 130 million reads globally. Uh, we've had about 64.6 .6 million reads via republication and over 50 million unique leaders on site. The Conversation Africa is also a part of a global network of sites um, and sister sites based in Australia, the US, the UK, Canada, Spain, Indonesia, New Zealand, Brazil, Italy, and France. So in all, we're a network of about 10 international editions published in about 28 languages and republished in 97 countries um, around the world. And Why do we need to be a news and analysis platform that mainstreams the voices of Africa's academic and researchers? Within the last year, we published more than 1,000 generating more than 15 million reads globally. Now in its fourth edition, this award is part of the Conversation Africa's effort to recognize and celebrate academic experts in the West Africa region who have taken the time to share their expertise on our platform within the previous um, year. Just like in the previous editions, we've selected the top three universities in Ghana and Nigeria. In each of these institutions, we drill down to pick authors with the most published articles and those with the most read articles. But as an exciting edition or addition this year, and that's with the introduction of our Francophone operations now in full swing, um, We've added you know, similar categories for our French academics and French writers. So we'll be handing out prizes to academics with the most published articles and another with the most read 
article from our francophone um, region uh, in this edition of the TC um, West Africa Communication, the Science Communication Award. I'm very, very, very excited about that. I, I look forward to us seeing our winners um, across, across the region. And I also look forward to greater participation of academic experts you know, um, in the course of the coming, uh, coming year. I hope that this award and, and the events of today and the publicity that the events of today will, will attract will go a long way in encouraging contribute their expertise to contribute their voice to um, in discourse not only within the region but across across the continent and in fact sometimes beyond. Thank you very much once again for joining us this morning. And um, I'll hand you over to the competent hands of my colleagues, Anu and Godfrey. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Adejuwon, um, for um, that uh, introduction about the conversation, Africa, and what it is that we do. And um, it's time to hear from our keynote speaker, but um, such is his stutter that even I cannot introduce him. So I will bring back uh, my colleague uh, Anu Anibaba, Strategic Partnerships West Africa, to introduce our keynote speaker. Over to you, Anu. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for that welcome and introduction. Um, so we received uh, Dr. Diatadis by bio, and I'm just going to read briefly from it. Um, and then we will then present the slides and he will walk us through his keynote speech. So Dr. Oludaya Tade, he teaches crime, deviance and social problems at Nigeria's premier university, University of Ibadan. He's a fellow of the Institute for Money, Technology and Financial Inclusion at the University of California in the US. His scholarly publications have appeared in journals like International Journal of Sociology and Social Policy, International Review of Victimology, amongst others. He's on the editorial board of International Journal of Offender Therapy and Comparative Criminology, SAGE, as Associate Editor and African Criminology Section Editor. Research communication expert. He's won our science communication awards. He won it in the year 2022 and currently the communications officer of the Conflict Research Network West Africa and a member of the Nigerian Society for Criminology. He is one of our authors at the Conversation Africa. He's just going to share a little bit more. Um, on key, um, why we do science communication writing and the benefits that it's had for him so far over the years that he's been writing for the communication, uh, sorry, for the Conversation Africa. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now um, and I'm going to unmute Dr. Olu Tade. Is he here? I saw him in the waiting room. Okay. I'm going to ask you to unmute now, sir. Yeah, hello. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today, sir? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, for let me control this. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Um, thank you for inviting our host to gather again to celebrate um, great minds. And I'm honored also to uh, be invited to uh, present uh, this uh, short keynote. And um, I also recognize my uh, professors and colleagues in the house. Um, and then, of course, the headship of a Conversation Africa for the great work that you guys have been doing, of course, to showcase uh, our findings uh, to the world. Now, um, my short um, our keynote is uh, titled Science Communication for What? And I, I, I asked that particular question because 
because uh, it is an important thing for us to ruminate about because uh, this comes out uh, often when you interact with colleagues uh, about why they need uh, to do science communication. And then, of course, the question that comes to their mind is, okay, so for what? What's, what is there for, for us? What, what is there? And then, of course, that brings me uh, to a fantastic uh, presentation which uh, one of my colleagues uh, uh, made yesterday at the General Assembly of Ecodestria in uh, uh, Dakar, in which he spoke about the precarious working conditions which African scholars uh, uh, face. And then, of course, which affects um, the nature of their contribution to the knowledge economy. Uh, around the world. And so, of course, uh, this uh, presentation would uh, shortly just highlight uh, uh, the need, why, of course, uh, recognizing the fact that, of course, there are precarious conditions, of course, there are also a uh, huge benefit for us to do science communication and then be out there so that we can make the desired uh, transformation and, of course, um, impact the society uh, uh, posi uh, positively. Uh, so how um, uh, is this uh, done? So you help me um, with the slide uh, from your side. Uh, hello, Andy. Hello. I'm sorry you were stuck. So I'm just um, restarting it so that the presentation plays from the beginning again. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So. Okay. So um, this, for every university, of course, around the world, of course, they have the core mandates of the research, teaching, and then, of course, uh, um, impacting the society. But whether they are involved in teaching, whether they are doing um, uh, uh, research and of course impacting society, the ultimate goal for them is that of course they need to of course interact and communicate whatever they are doing of course to the public so that the desired impact can be achieved. Every one of us um, uh, lives within the society and then researches of course um, different areas, different problems that we observe and then we come out with findings. So the essence of uh, this core mandate uh, is not just for us to be within the four walls of the university, uh, teaching and researching. We also need to engage uh, the community uh, through, of course, science communication. And I bring on board the, the um, idea of my university. Most universities have their own uh, goal um, and the goal of some universities is, uh, of course, like the University of Ibadan that has a vision and also has a mission. And the mission, um, of course, um, which is uh, to be um, uh, um, um, to be among uh, the best, of course, around the world, and then. Uh, be a world-class institution for academic excellence geared towards meeting societal needs. You can't meet societal needs if all your researches, if all your publications, if all your teachings are wholly domesticated within your the confines of your institution and you are not, of course, uh, expanding uh, the frontiers of knowledge. You can only expand the frontiers of knowledge. You can only impact society when the society in which you have researched, the problems that you have identified, uh, you communicate it to them so that they can take the right uh, steps towards ameliorating this particular uh, problem. And so when we talk about um, a science communication, of course, science communication importantly then talks about um, a, uh, a dialogue between the scientific community and then the general public. And then it involves using, uh, relaying our evidence-based uh, experts' knowledge to the, to the public. Um, when we do science communication, uh, non-academic community who would uptake uh, what we have researched are there for us to listen to us. And then the skills which we bring to bear when we do science communication is to uh, break it down into layman's point of view and then allow them to understand 
how that has been uh, dissected and the possible solutions to the problems that confront the society. And when we do science communication, it enhances uptake of our research. Uh, of course, we can use different platforms, policy briefs, opinion editorial, podcasts, blogs, and so on and so and so on and so forth. And of course, what um, Conversation Africa is uh, doing is also uh, key because it also brings together most of these publics for the con uh, consumption of our research um, uh, findings for the social transformation and with the principal aim of uh, influencing uh, policies uh, in, in our immediate community or around the world. And if all of us, of course, uh, flashes our black uh, minds back to when there was COVID um, and then everyone uh, needed authentic information, and authentic information, you need the right platforms. And the, the right platforms where you can source uh, for those information are the ones uh, with credibility. And I think um, Conversation Africa brings that credibility to the table by, of course, partnering with experts uh, within the university. When there is um, a trouble across the world, when you watch Al Jazeera, when you watch um uh cnn and the rest of them the first part of call is the university the experts in that particular field so that they can give background information and experts knowledge findings to direct and change uh of course guide policy actors to take the right decisions and so we cannot uh, underestimate the value and the contribution uh, with which science communication uh brings to the ta table so science communication, of course, consider yourself as a researcher. You are involved, you are researching about people's health, crime, governance, migration, music, and, and the likes, arts. And you have such findings, just like we say in the university, oh, we have done so much uh, this year. And people ask the question, are they gathering dust on the shelf? Should the public with, with which you framed your research, not being informed about the finding, should governments not know about critical researches that you have conducted about governance, should they not know how to organize um, uh, the, criminal, uh, the, uh, the security architecture, even when you have done so much in the area of a crime uh, research, and organizations also to design products to meet uh, the problems that you have identified in the society. They deserve, uh, of course, to know about what we are doing within the university. And that is, this is why science communication uh, helps inform better decisions at individual level, at policymaker level, and of course, at organizational level. Why then, of course, do we uh, need this science uh, communication? And uh, to encourage our colleagues, of course, who are yet uh, to come on board because one, it strengthens our connection with the community as scientists, as researchers. Um, when we do research and we do stakeholder engagement and our uh, uh, we are involved in science communication, whether we bring people together, we write opinion editorials, we contribute to the calls that are made regularly by Conversation Africa. Of course, we are informing and the public, and that connects the public. They all are able to know that people are concerned, genuinely concerned about what worries them. And then there are also preferred solutions which they can also use. It increases confidence uh, towards scientific information. As experts, people want, once they say this is coming from the university, people attach so much uh, credibility. to the information that is coming from there. And that is a particular part to ensure that experts are the people that they are, are involved with so that they bring their expert knowledge uh, to, to bear uh, to inform people on a particular call which they have made. Uh, again, uh, it also ensures that the right benefit uh, ensures people's right to benefit from advances of science. Of course, that is um, uh, taking once uh, we are involved in science uh, communication. And then, of course, we 
the society uh, needs us, of course, to be involved in uh, communicating with them, letting them know what we have done. And that is why even during COVID, it is the university, the research community that have to come up with what they have done in the area and then, of course, begin to guide uh, the world. Uh, and now, of course, we are safer uh, due to the volume of information uh, from the scientific community. And so we cannot play down the importance of uh, being involved in uh, or doing science communication. Because today, the state of science communication has evolved, and most organizations that are involved in scientific uh, uh, research privileges disseminating uh, their findings to a wide range of consuming public. Uh, my university, University of Ibadan, has a directorate uh, for public uh, communication, and we have a uh, designated uh, uh, deputy vice chancellor in, in charge of research, innovation, and strategic partnership. Even though, of course, uh, the nature and the uh, the kind of uh, communication that is um, engaged with in this particular um, the offices that I've mentioned is not totally embracing the essence of science communication. We really need we really need um, um, universities within the West African region to deepen. Uh, knowledge uh, about science communication and encourage their scholars, their researchers to come on board because of the advantages that it also has for the institution and the individuals that are involved. And then, of course, uh, people are training as uh, science communicators now, and then they have greater visibility, the impact, the uptake, and then, of course, the opportunities that it, it presents to them. Now to conversation that I've been uh, involved uh, with for some years now, interesting uh, for uh, good years. Uh, of course, seven years they have been involved in disseminating evidence-based uh, researches, uh, the use more of expert opinions on topical issues, and I know can send the uh, three meals in a week uh, asking for experts on different areas uh, across uh, uh, the sub-region. And then people have to come forward. Uh, of course, we receive such meals. And wherever our expertise uh, lies, uh, we make inputs. Uh, they have been involved with over 1,200 uh, scholars. And they, of course, published more than uh, 1,000 uh, articles. And this is huge. And then if you are like me, who is also more interested in who reads my work, and I go to the monthly reports. Uh, they make institutional reports, and I look at where people are reading my work. But you would also even notice that they read more of our work outside the confines of our region. And, and this uh, tells uh, a lot, lot of stories uh, that people are even interested in what we are doing. And um, what is the uh, distinctive character for me, for uh, of the conversation Africa, it's in the area of credibility. They provide a platform where only experts are allowed. And so uh, they have uh, strategically hedged out uh, people who are not experts. So they bring only experts' uh, opinion. And that gives their platform the credibility and the followership that which they enjoy. The style which they use, of course, uh, away from the huge, uh, big jargon, uh, specific to each field. And I know that colleagues would face a whole lot of problem. Um, Fred, we does it seem like we've lost? Um, yes, um, so, so this what you? I think sadly we lost Dr. Hello. Okay, it's back. Okay, it's back. Okay, yeah. So I was talking about the style, um, the credibility with which a conversation uh, brings um, on, on board. Uh, people trust uh, that particular platform because of the quality of um, experts and the people that they bring. 
um, uh, to share their knowledge, their researches on their platform. And this, of course, uh, gives credibility. I also talked about the simple language, the narrative techniques that they use in telling the stories. In fact, sometimes um, colleagues will read uh, the final um, uh, product of the research that you have done, and they will uh, marvel and say, wow, I, 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 it's easy to read, very interesting, a whole lot of about uh, 25,000 uh, word uh, article is reduced to about 800 in simple word, and everyone, of course, can relate with it. So the narrative tool, that, and then, of course, you don't want to talk about the catchy titles that we end up with, and then the visual appeals that most of these, uh, 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 our um, reports, uh, um, of course, come out with, which also attracts people to it, and then talks about topical uh, issues. Next slide, please. And uh, just because of uh, that, for me, um, working with Conversation Africa has been very um, useful, useful in the sense that there are, I've enjoyed greater visibility, I've enjoyed, of course, media engagement, I've been invited uh, to participate on several platforms. I've had to reject many. Um, I've had to reject many. <laughs> and I have to, of course, uh, uh, people, and it's not only from within uh, the country, across the country, CNN, Al Jazeera, they send their crew when they are doing a particular something which they found on a conversation. And of course, in terms of collaboration, I've also enjoyed that through the publications, people have sent mails to me. Uh, for us to do some research uh, works, write proposal for grants together, just because uh, of what uh, conversation, the platform that Conversation Africa uh, pro, um, has uh, uh, given us uh, to showcase our uh, findings. And then, of course, increased citation. I've also observed that, that after uh, publication uh, of my re uh, research on the Conversation Africa, a um, few months uh, like that, you get to see people uh, reading it more. And then, of course, I have increased uh, uh, citation for my uh, for my papers. Um, and then, of course, I think these are some of the areas. I've also uh, been able to get um, funding to att attend conference. I got one to attend a conference on cybercrime in the UK. Even though, uh, of course, their visa issues didn't uh, work, I eventually presented. But of course, just to foreground the fact that there are huge opportunities for doing science communication and the platform with which the Conversation Africa has uh, provided uh, for us. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, now concluding, of course, um, one important thing which I should also not mention is what colleagues asked me. I recall that um, when, uh, I think was it 2020, when I won, I was announced winner. Uh, colleagues back home were asking me, aha, we heard that you won, congratulations. How much did they give you? I said, ah, there is no, there is no price award uh, attached to this. And I understand when colleagues ask that, and because it talks about the context within which we operate, and the, the, because people are then uh, more in, involved about survival struggles, uh, condition uh, of service, and the, and the likes of them. And so I think going forward, Conversation Africa may also begin to look at um, um, price competitions, uh, maybe in the area of science communication going forward, I don't know, but that's, and then of course, we really need to deepen, um, interaction with, uh, university. I know Conversation Africa has been doing that, but I know that you will see how difficult it is to even convince the leadership to come on board rather than for those of us that are, in, uh, that are involved, we need to even uh, encourage our colleagues to come on board. Apart from that, of course, uh, we also need to show our people that 
science communication is a growing uh, field for most of the grants that I've been involved with now that is a component of research communication, huge funding for it. And people really need to develop and hone their skills in that particular area. Universities also have huge work to do. They uh, recruit people. There is no such training about um, how to get your researches out there. And they expect uh, those that have been recruited to do everything all alone. Uh, the tax before Conversation Africa is huge. I know with more engagement, with more deep interest, I would uh, get over most of these initial challenges. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to speak at this uh, fourth award. I wish uh, Conversation Africa uh, growing from most strength to strength uh, as we move into a new year. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much, um, uh, Professor Olu Dayotade, uh, for that. And, uh, that leads us straight into the reason why we've all gathered the awards ceremony um, itself. And uh, as my colleague and editor, Adejuan explained, um, a few additions have happened um, in there. But uh, we will start. Um, anu, if um, you can step in um, and deal with the technicalities of the nominations and the winnings, I'll be very happy. All right, um, so I'm moving on to the award section. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ludaya Tali, for that. Uh, that was very insightful, and um, I took points um, where we needed to work on, you know, partnerships. So thank you so much for that conclusion, um, and we, um, we hope to see what the Conversation Africa does in terms of partnerships with the universities, especially um, next year. Um, so I'm just going to pull up my the winners drum roll. Um, so I'm going to hand over to um, Kagure, who's going to announce the winners from the University of Ghana. So for the University of Ghana, we've had 19 articles in the last year, and we would be presenting for the author with most published articles and the most read article. So Kagure, I would be handing over this to you um, to announce the winner's name. Thank you, Anu, and good morning or good afternoon to everybody in the room. I have the honor of recognizing contributions from Ghana. And to kick things off, we start with the University of Ghana, as Anu has mentioned, where we have received 19 articles. And the author with the most published articles is Marianne Selom Sara. Congratulations, Marianne. She gave us two articles. She also contributed the university's most read article, which was titled Starlink, SpaceX's new internet service could be a game changer in Africa. And that was in March 2023, and it brought in 28,597 reads. Marianne, we appreciate your fantastic contribution, and we welcome you to say a few words. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Calgary. Um, I want to first of all say thank you for the recognition. Uh, I knew the school was doing well when I was checking up on it once in a while, but I didn't know it was doing that well. And uh, I'd also want to say it's it's really not possible for us to be able to do these things without the help of our family, friends, and uh, colleagues. So I would like to say thank you to, to mine as I received this award. Um, I also want to mention Natasha Joseph. She was the editor on my article and I learned quite a lot from her whilst we went through the process of getting the article together for publication. I mean, as scientists, as mentioned over and over again, we have our own concepts of how we want to put across our information, but she, she was really patient with me to, to get the article to where uh, it is. The concept for, for, for putting that article out was to promote planetary and space science in Africa. 
I mean, it's an area where we are lagging behind and we need to do some more uh, work. And so I try to do as much outreach and promotion as I can uh, regarding planetary and space science in Ghana. And so my thought was, if, if I can talk about things we are very much interested in, like the internet, which is also related to planetary and space science, then uh, we would get some traction. And I think uh, it did the trick. So once again, thank you very much for the award. I am very, very grateful uh, for, for the recognition. Thank you. Thanks very much, Marianne, and congratulations. Kamen Kuruma University of Science and Technology. Most read article was titled, Accra is congested, but relocating Ghana's capital is not the only option. This was from Stephen Apiataki and Owusu Amponsa, and that came in January 2023, and the piece received 15,385 reads. Um, I see both Stephen and Owusu are in the room. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, you're welcome to say a few words, if you would like, uh, Dr. Dr. Taki. Thank you very much. Maybe you'd um, like to go first. I think I have to first thank uh, Godfrey and the team at uh, Conversation Africa. The work you do sometimes baffles our mind. Because when we bring the work, the way you were able to help us shape it means that as academics, we have a lot to learn for our friends also in the journalists and the media. Um, the whole concept about this study was about conversation in Ghana on whether to relocate our capital city or not. And it's coming from a research that captured both Accra and Abuja. But the argument was that in Africa, our biggest problem is that we concentrate facilities and services at the spot. So when the place gets congested, it doesn't mean necessarily mean relocate the capital city. You may have to relocate certain facilities. And I think that was the inspiration. I want to thank my uh, master's supervisor, Professor Gordon at Queen's University, Canada, for also inspiring us to do this work. And I thank all my colleagues, my family. I would like my colleague, Dr. Usam Professor coming. And thanks once again to Godfrey and the whole Conversation Africa team. Okay, so also here, thank you very much indeed, Conversation Africa, for the opportunity to have contributed that piece. In fact, um, writing to a general readership is not that easy because we are comfortable in our comfort zones as, as researchers. But Conversation Africa has taught us how to write to the understanding of a general readership, to which we have to show gratitude. We keep on receiving invitations to write popular science articles, but we hardly take them seriously until we jump onto Conversation Africa. So what I will say is that going forward, we will take this very seriously and then we will contribute more articles to enhancing uh, the, the attainment of the collective objectives as researchers and also Conversation Africa. What I have witnessed over the years is that I, when I began paying attention to popular science articles, I've seen that my citation counts um, continue to grow. For this, I will have to express enormous gratitude to Conversation Africa and to my research team, Dr. Techi um, and all others. We thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm sure Godfrey is happy to hear you say that you are looking forward to contributing more. And as a team, we look forward to reading more from you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Team Gardner. Congratulations to all the winners. And I will hand this over back to Anu. All right. Thank you so much um, for that. And congratulations to the winners. Um, we Thank you for also shouting out to the editors um, that assisted during your work because they don't get any shout out at all, um, not even recognition on any of the articles that they've um, worked on. So that's really nice to know that these um, editors have helped with your work. So thank you so much, Godfrey. Thank you so much, Tash, who isn't on here, but we've let her know. Um, so thank you for shouting out to them as well. So now we would move on to Nigeria, the Nigeria Awards um, in West Africa. And we're going to start with the Jimba University. 
And I'm going to call on my colleague, Wale. Um, Wale Fasade to present the Obafemi Awolowo University Award. Over to you. Thank you, Anu. And uh, good morning, everybody from this part of Nigeria, Lagos, uh, blazing hot. But I'm glad to present this award. Uh, Obafemi Awolowo University. And I must wonder, I know why we are starting with uh, OAU. The University of Badon remains the greatest university in this part of the world. But uh, I will let this slide. So the first one is the article with the most read, uh, the highest number of re reads. And that's uh, my friend and brother, uh, who I came to meet in this conversation job, uh, Professor Akoni Bokun Akiyemi, who wrote four articles for us in the past year. Uh, currently, or under the year under the review, Professor Akiyemi became the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, for Research, Innovation, and Development of the Wafemi Awolowo University. And about two weeks ago, he became a Fellow of the Social Science Academy. Garnering a college and uh, awards all along the way. So, this is just another feather to his cap. Uh, I'm not sure Professor Akinyemi will be here today or is he here. The University of Ife is having its convocation. And tomorrow he's here. He, is he here? I is called he? him to join in. Yeah. Oh, he has joined. Okay. So, Professor Akinyemi, I will pause a while. Uh, it's my honor to present this award to a friend, a brother, and a fantastic scholar. Congratulations, Professor Akinyemi. Over to you. Anu, can you unmute him? Is he muted? Please. I've just requested that he unmute. Well, um, I think Professor Akemi sent a message on the chat that okay. he's in the convocation. Oh, program. he's in this, so he can't speak. I said so. He might not be able to speak. Yeah. 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 Okay. He will not be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, but he can hear you. So, congratulations. Okay. Uh, the second award on it from it or uh, for Ife. It's going to be on uh, the article that has the highest number of reads. And incidentally, it's an article that was an Africa-wide article involving the professor Akinyemi Ege and uh, Esther William Dongumaro and Jackie Zemina. Kagure, my colleague, was the editor on that story, but I loaned him Professor Akinyemi, uh, who actually dragged or pleaded or co-opted the other two African scholars to write the article. The article is on the birth of the 8 billion person in Africa and telling us that Africa will shape the future of the planet's population, garnering 27,281 weeks. Again, congratulations to Professor Akemi. Thank you. Over, Anu. All right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you, Professor Akemi. And thank you for joining in um, and congratulations. Um, and uh, congratulations on the convocation as well with your students. Um, so we'll let you go now and we'll move on to the University of Nigeria, where I will call on my colleague, Kofuola Belosage, um, to present the awards. Michael, are you able to unmute? Okay. Um, okay. Um, let me just step in for my colleague, Kofo. Um, thank you. Who is having a few issues. So uh, dealing with the University of Nigeria, where 17 articles uh, came through, the author with the most published articles was uh, Freedom C. Onua. I hope I am pronouncing um, that correctly. So um, congratulations, uh, Dr. Freedom C. Onua uh, from the University of Nigeria. Um, you contributed four articles uh, in the calendar year uh, to the course. So congratulations to you. And with that, I think my colleague Kofu, 
um, his background. So Kofu, um, if you would take over the most read article presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. My internet tripped off the wrong time. So can we all, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, go for okay. it. Please go ahead with. Um, yes. That's the most read article titled Africans, Africa's Oceans Are Being Protected to Serve the Interest of Big Foreign Corporates was by Ife Sinachi Oka for Yahoo. Freedom on your heart. John April 26, 2023, with 14,200 reads. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, Dr. Freedom actually sent in a message that he will be um, mid flight. So he's not available to join today, but we'll send him his certificate and gifts as well. So thank you for presenting that award. And we would move on to the next university. Um, okay. um, the next university that we are um, presenting for is University of Ibado. And I know my colleague would be happy about this, Wale Fasade. Um, so they have 13 articles in the year. They've written 13 articles from the University of Ibado, which has gathered one hundred and 10,695 reads by nine authors. So the author with the most published article is um, Professor Emmanuel Ayede. Um, I'm just going to unmute your mic now if you'd like to say a couple of words. I see you up here. Yeah, thank you very much um, for this award. Um, I appreciate the editors who have worked with me uh, to fine tune those articles. And uh, I think most importantly, uh, Wally Fatade comes to me for contributions. And uh, sometimes uh, when uh, the time is very hard, he, he continues to press and encourage me you know, to spare the time to do the writing. I'm also grateful to my friends, my members of my family. Uh, I think my wife is here uh, watching the show. Um, she's also an academic like me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, my colleagues, uh, both in Nigeria and at the uh, Partnership of Social and Governance Research uh, in Nairobi, where I currently lead the research and uptake, uh, policy uptake uh, unit. Uh, we take science communication very seriously, uh, and I hope that... Um, uh, most of the very wonderful research we do in the organization, we also find their way into the conversation. Uh, thank you uh, for the award. And also thank you to um, Oladai Otadi, who is also from my faculty of the social sciences in Badan, and has blazed the trail you know, before uh, the, I'm joining him this year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Professor. And um, I'm just saying hi to your wife who's on here. Um, congratulations to you too as uh, the co awardee of this um, article. Um, so we're going to move on to the most read article, um, who is written by our keynote speaker himself, um, Oludayo Tade. Um, and this is Meet the Yahoo Boys Undergraduate Con Men which has 31,000 reads, 31,354 reads. Um, please, are you here? Are you still here? Yes, I know I'm, I'm still here. Um, thank you, uh, Professor Aide, congratulations. Uh, for the award. Congratulations, madam. Congratulations to the entire uh, conversation uh, family for seeing uh, these achievements today. I also want to register the, the persistence and uh, is the encouragement of um, the editor, Wale Fatade, who would even pick a phone call, phones and call me 
uh, we are still expecting this, we are still expecting that. And of course, even when he tries to understand the context and then encourage uh when necessary. So I also thank uh, him so much for the achievement of today and then for the award. Thanks for to Conversation Africa. Thanks to my colleague who would I would disturb to read the manuscript before they get uh, published, Dr. Oluato Sinade Niyi. Uh, thank you so much for coming forth. And then Dr. Oluwa Kudus, uh, Kudus um, uh, has also been very helpful in uh, getting most of these things done. Uh, going forward, I also still pledge uh, continue the patronage and the partnership with Conversation uh, Africa to get more out by next year. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, sir. So we have um, an individual recognition, which is the author with the most published articles in Nigeria. So because we narrowed down the universities by the most articles published, but we also found that there are authors from different universities who have written a lot of articles. Today, we want to honor and just call out um, Dr. Olayinka Uyebile, who in the last year has written six articles for The Conversation Africa. And he is a journalist and communication scholar from Trinity University in Lagos. Um, Dr. Olayinka, do you have a few words? I couldn't wait now. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. You know, I would say that uh, writing, especially writing articles for communication, newspaper magazines is not new to some of us. It is the academic variety that we are getting into. And I want to especially thank my brother, my younger brother, for always urging me on, and my editor, Mr. Wally Fatade, for all the uh, problems and saying, I want to write this, and you do this for us, I know that uh, fantastic. And uh, we recognize as such is uh, something wonderful. And I also want to thank. Uh, Mr. Soyipa himself and before Alamin or Sage, both uh, our part have met in one newsroom or the other as I traverse several newsrooms across the country. I pledge that uh, this award will spur me on to do more. And I honestly, I, at the initial stage, didn't understand. How wide it could be, but I've seen that the platform is very wide and good. So uh, I think I, I pledge that I'll do more. Uh, hope that uh, what I do, we have more exposure and reach uh, around the world. Thank you very much for the conversation, for giving us this platform to share our thoughts and our researches with you. God bless you. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ola Yinkai And yeah, we hope to see more from you next year. Congratulations, sir. Um, right now, we'll be moving on to Senegal. So um, we started DACA operations a about last year, I believe. Um, and we've decided to add them to the awards program. And I'll be calling on my colleague, Asan to announce for the universities in Senegal. Um, I'm going to hand over to you, Asan now. Give me a second. Sorry, I have to unmute you. Uh, 
Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry. Thank you. Hello, thank you, uh, everybody. We are delighted to be part of this uh, ceremony. This is the first time we uh, have welcomed Francophone winners to, to, to this ceremony, and we hope to welcome many more next year. Uh, this year, we have two winners from Senegalese uh, universities. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it to this ceremony, but I'm going to uh, introduce them. Uh, uh, we have two Francophone universities, both from Senegal, uh, Gaston Berger University in San Luis, and the other is Shah Antejob University of, uh, of Dakar. Uh, for the first Francophone category, uh, the University of Dakar, Shiak Antejob University, is the one that has contributed with uh, uh, most articles, uh, 15 articles. Uh, the author who published the most article is Dr. Masamba Gay for his piece, uh, Wolof is Reclaiming Ground at uh, the French Language uh, Wines. Uh, the article got uh, more than 6,000 reads this year. This is the first category. The other category, the second, is the category, the must read articles. Uh, this category, the must read article is won by Fatima Fall from Gaston Berger University in San Luis for her article on Jollof Rice, on Chebujan, known as uh, Jollof Rice in uh, Anglophone Africa. The, the article, Who Invented Jollof Rice? Senegal Beats Ghana and Nigeria to the title, got uh, more than uh, uh, 37,000 reads. The piece was published in English and French. They couldn't make it to the room today, but on behalf of the whole Francophone team, on behalf of the whole TC Africa team, I would like to offer to them our warmest congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Asan, for announcing the winners in Senegal. Congratulations to them, and we will share their certificates with them as well. Um, so now I would actually be handing over to Godfrey. Or Godfrey, should I just continue? Or actually, let me hand over back to you, and then you say a couple of words. Well, congratulations to everybody um, who's been awarded today. And um, some of the words that we've heard from our authors have really been heartwarming, um, at least to let us know that the work matters. I was very happy, particularly with um, the comment about the increase in citations um, based on um, the work, the, the articles that have been published. And uh, this is the kind of impact that... Um, we are interested in it and I want to see. So once again, as uh, MC for the day, I say congratulations to everybody. Um, I, I wish I could just say the final thank yous, but um, I will bring back Anu to say the final thank yous and then we'll call it a day. Anu? All right. Okay. Well, we can have you say some if you'd like. Um, okay. So would you like to have a go, Godfrey? Okay, sure. Um, right. So once again, thank you yeah. uh, to everybody and thank you for your time um, this morning um, with us. Um, we, at the conversation, uh, appreciate the time that you put in each, each and every day in doing what you do and in doing it with us. Uh, we do not take that um, for granted. Um, the Becoming a public intellectual is something that a lot of academics um, struggle with. And we understand that it is not easy. So we certainly do appreciate the time. And also because of your busy schedules, um, sitting down to do things sometimes at breaking news speed, um, which is not a requirement of your job, but you do it with us because you trust us. It's something that we uh, do not take for granted. And because of 
um, this uh, and the effort you put in your research is putting Africa on the map. So we ask that you do not take it for granted as well. So thank you uh, for sending in all the pitches um, that you send in. Thank you for responding to our commissions as well. Uh, it's a hand go hand come, as we say in West Africa. Um, we look forward to a successful year um, next year with more collaborations. Uh, we wish you happy holidays and uh, happy new year. And please feel free to reach out to me or Anu, um, especially Anu, um, if you need any information about the conversations, about the opportunity for trainings on science communications and how to pitch for the conversations uh, for your faculties, for your departments, and for the university as a whole. Um, thank you very much and um, have a great day. All right. Thank you so much, Godfred. Um, with all Godfred said, I would just say thank you again. And I don't think I need to go further than that. Um, I want to thank you for continuously putting Africa on the map because the research we do is outstanding. And I want to thank you for writing these articles. I know they're not easy, like my colleague has said. And I just want to say I'm wishing you happy holidays and a happy new year, like he said. And just closing out the ceremony. And please feel free to reach us. Um, if you need anything or if you need us to partner on anything, please do not hesitate to reach out to us in West Africa. Um, so have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and we also have a note from our general manager in the comment section. Thank you so much to my colleagues for being here, for presenting. And thank you even to my GM for being here and Adejuan, who is on leave, and Godfrey, who is on leave. But they've made time to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so I will send uh, uh, what's it called? For feedback in your emails, um, please, if you could just uh, complete um, the surveys and we would get um, feedback about the event and just about the conversation, Africa in general, the year so far. And so we can take these points and do it better next year. Um, thank you so much for your time and have a good afternoon. Thanks.